Today we're going to be talking about five moves that all wide receivers need to learn. So this first move we're going to be going over here is from Zay Flowers, and this is called a throw-by move. So a throw-by move is a route or a move that you could use on a route where you have to break towards the DB's leverage and you were not able to stack him. So let's say I got this press coverage look. I have a DB who's lined up outside shade, and I have to run an outside breaking route. Or it could be a situation where I have inside shade press, and I have to run an inside breaking route, like a dig or a post route. So anytime that we have a DB who's lined up in outside shade press, his goal is to take away the outside release. Obviously, ideally on an out route, I'd love to release to the outside, get into him, break off a of one foot, have plenty of space to be able to run. But a disciplined DB is not going to let us release to the outside because that is his responsibility. If I get forced away to the sideline and try to break and don't give my quarterback room, I am taking myself out of the play. So we got to take what he gives me. We take the inside release. Now, obviously the goal against press coverage always, and this is where the throw by move comes into play, is to stack him, right? I want to be able to get directly over this top of the DB where he's trailing my back hip. I give him a good good inside fake, get some separation, and have room to run out. But what if I can't do that? What if the DB plays it well? What if he's faster than me and he's right on my hip? That is when this throw-by move comes into play. So a throw-by move is where you would take your inside hand and you are going to put it on the back of this DB's shoulder or the back of his hip. Most important thing is that we do not extend and push because that could get called. I've seen it get called. This is not necessarily a push off, I would say. It's just if that ball's thrown earlier, that ball's in the air, and they catch us extending and pushing the DB in the back, we could easily get a flag called. So keep those elbows tight to your frame. Focus on swatting the back of the shoulder, back of the hip. It's a little bit more subtle. I don't recommend reaching for the arm just because I feel that's not a point of control. So at the last possible second, you want to put the hands on the back of his shoulder, back of his hip, slip under, and now you have room for the quarterback to throw you open and we have separation because we took the inside release and I trusted myself at the top of the route. So the throw by move is a great move that you could use guys when we have to run again like an inside breaking route or an outside breaking route towards the DB's leverage. So let's play this thing again full speed one more time then we'll get into the next move here from Antonio Brown. Great ultimate out route here from Zay Flowers. So now before we get into this next move here from Antonio Brown if you're a wide receiver guys and you would like to train with us we're going to be coming out to 11 more states across the U.S. for two day long long QB and wide receiver training camp. So guys, if you are local to any one of these cities that we circled here, check out that very first link in the description below if you would like to sign up for one of our two-day long QB and wide receiver camps. Guys, next up, we're going to be coming out to Portland, then Dallas, then Nashville, Chicago, Buffalo, Atlanta, Houston, Philly, Detroit, Boise, and Los Angeles. Guys, our Portland, Dallas, Nashville camp, and the first four that we did are all completely sold out. So guys, these all will sell out. So if you want to take advantage of this, like we said, check out that very first link in the description below. Again, very first link below. We'd love to have you there. Let's get back to this video. So now, this next move here is going to be from Antonio Brown, and this is going to be something called a rocker step. So this rocker step is honestly pretty much perfect. I know some of you have heard of this move before, and it seems a little bit repetitive, but guys, what I'm going to tell you right now with this rocker step will take your rocker step really to the next level because it's just a very simple tip that not a lot of wide receivers do. So for those of you that don't know, a rocker step is essentially where you are stepping in the direction you are going first to like sell like you're running the opposite route of what you're doing, right? So Antonio Brown's running a post route right here. So... We are trying to sell like I am running a corner route. With that actually taking a full three steps to the corner, this is not a corner pose. The move is called a rocker step. So with the rocker step, I would say the first step of this move, this is what a lot of wide receivers don't do. Think of it like a prep step. So this is not a step where you're trying to step super far. You're trying to step outside the DB's frame. You're not trying to sell the move on the first step. This step is just to set up the second move because the second move of this movement, any type of crossover movement, any type of rocker step movement, the second movement is always more important because that's what sells it and that's what gets a separation from this DB. So this step has to step hard into the ground. It should be a violent step with your foot, but it needs to be underneath your shoulder frame. So by that, I mean that you're not reaching. The reason why it needs to be under your shoulder frame is because to sell this second move, you have to push off of this foot. When that foot makes contact off of the middle arch and off of the ball of your foot, the ball of the foot is the most explosive part of the foot and that middle arch, almost like you are a pitcher coming off of a mound. You need to push into the second cut because that push will obviously create speed, but also that will allow your body to go with the cut. You almost want to think of it like your hips, your shoulders, your head are all attached to the foot because again, when we can step this far, but because 
I'm pushing off of that inside foot and my body goes with the cut, I'm still in a balanced position. A lot of guys, what they do is they'll do this rocker step and maybe they even take a short step, but they don't step, they don't push off of the step. They'll take the short step inside their frame, but they don't push. So when they step to the outside and they try to step wide, this cut gets way outside their frame and they have no drive back to the inside. Plus, a disciplined DB guy is watching what? He's watching my hips. So if my hips go with the foot, that also helps me sell it, but keeps me in an explosive position. So guys, with that rocker step, make sure the first step is a hard step. It's inside your frame and we are pushing off of it to sell the outside fake. So now, this next move is not necessarily a move that we've gone over. I would consider this move a closed space split release. So I'm sure all of you have seen a split release, but probably not ran like this. And this is a great move here from CD Lamb. You see a lot of receivers like Tank Dell also use this move. It's a very efficient move when you have a DB who's off maybe about two to three yards and you have to close the space with him. So let's watch this full speed. So he comes off, hits him with a split, almost like it's mid route, right? So I'm sure all you guys have seen this split release off the line, right? So a split release, some people call it a come to balance release. It's when both feet make contact with the grass at the exact same time. So you are splitting your feet. You are not jumping. You don't want to land super wide. You almost want to think of it like your inside foot steps out, your back foot steps up. So don't think of it like both feet split out wide. Think of it like the inside foot. So the foot closest to the quarterback steps lateral, back foot just steps straight up. And that will ultimately make that split release a little bit quicker. But when you split like this, you are in a position of balance and you could react off of this DB. So a lot of people will do that split just to kind of freeze the DB and get him to stop his feet and maybe anticipate where we are going. And that is completely fine. But also off the line of scrimmage, this split allows us to react off of a DB. Like let's say, for example, we do this split release because both feet are in the grass, because my feet are not crazy wide, they're a little wide, but because they're about shoulder width apart, I could react to wherever this DB goes. So the DB jumps to the inside. Okay, cool. I go to the outside. DB jumps to the outside. Okay, cool. I could go to the inside because I'm in a position where I could push off my outside foot or push off my inside foot. But again, it's almost like a hesitation move. So how are we able to do this, right? So let's say a split release is a release that you like. You could use it three separate ways, I would say. Let's say a DB is like head up, right up on the line of scrimmage with you. You could just split, bam, right off the line. Your inside foot steps out, your back foot steps up. Now let's say that same DB is now two to three yards away, but you like that split release with him. We want to close the space with him. So I take two steps at him and then I hit him with the split. And again, it doesn't need to be like two steps every single time, but we need to close space. We need to step on his toes and then we hit him with that split to try to freeze him. So remember, in Inside foot steps out, back foot or outside foot steps up, and you make contact with the grass at the exact same time. How quickly can both feet hit the grass? A lot of people try to do this release slow because they think it's a hesitation move. It is a hesitation move, but it's a quick hesitation, okay? So guys, inside foot goes out, back foot or outside foot goes straight up. Up. So now, next move we're going to be discussing here is also from C.D. Lamb, and this is a move that I recommend um, or a route that I recommend you learn because honestly, it's an unguardable route if you run it correctly, and this is a great move to use if you have to run a choice route. So if you're out of the slot, and let's say you have the option, okay, I could run a choice route, or maybe it's just like kind of one of those like get open routes where you got a one-on-one -on -one matchup and they're just trusting you to get open, quarterback's hitting you with the ball, whatever. This route is considered something called a jerk route, but you could also think of this like a choice, but it's a great route to add to your tool belt because if you're in high school, they're going to ask you to run this route at the collegiate level, and if you haven't been asked to run an option route, I guarantee you, you will. So let's watch what CeeDee Lamb does here. So it's almost, it builds off of a whip route, but there's a little bit of tempo to it, right? So CD Lamb here, like so so a whip route is what, guys, where you sell like you're running a drag or a slant, you put the brakes on, you keep your hips and your shoulders facing the line of scrimmage, and then you whip back out towards the sideline, right? So a jerk route is where you would do that. You put the brakes on the same way, but you throw a jab to the outside and then cut back to the inside. So it's almost like a fake whip, I guess you could say. So we cut here, we drop his hips, right? CD Lamb drops hips. The best way to get separation on this jerk route is your hips and your shoulders have to turn towards the line of scrimmage. So we drop my hips. I'm hooking my hips around, one quick jab to the outside. And you see how he gives that little hesitation in this tempo here? That's not a necessity, but it definitely, definitely helps. It helps 100% with that getting separation, especially if you're running this on a linebacker, a strong safety, because that little change in your tempo and then that quick jab to the outside is what can make him overreact and like kind of like overcommit, if you will. So guys, a jerk route, again, you sell the slant, whip it out, bake the whip, and then cut back to the inside. Remember, drop my hips just like a whip. Flip my hips and my shoulders to the line of scrimmage just like a whip. And then one quick jab to the outside with an upper half fake. 
So now, next move here is going to be from Devontae Adams, and this is something called an open field crossover. So this is a very, very similar to a rocker step, but you guys got to know the different terminology, right? Like, so like an open field crossover is where like, I would say it's within like five to six yards. A crossover, just like a regular crossover is where it's like right off the line of scrimmage. And then a rocker step is like top of the break, 10 yards downfield on routes like a post, a corner, an out route, or an in route. But an open field crossover is again, like he's got like this little option route and he just hits him with a quick one, two. So let's play this full speed, then we'll break it down. So Adams comes up, hits him with a one, two, gets that DB to jump, ball is thrown. Now again, should he have caught this? Probably, I would say. A lot of people love to have Adams back and say, oh, the throw was behind. And it was behind, but like as a receiver, you got to challenge yourself. Like, hey, it hits your hands, you got to catch the ball. But we're still, we're focused on the move because this is a great move, right? So now, same idea with the, with the open field crossover. Is his first step a super big step? No, right? Is his second step a pretty big step? Yes, but watch what he does off of this first move. He pushes to sell the outside cut. Front foot gets down. He's pushing off of it. You see how that foot like skids almost in the grass? That's because he's pushing into it. That's what causes the hip, the hip, the like the lower part of the hip, the upper part of the hip, your shoulders, your head to all go with the cut to where it's not super wide outside your frame. Imagine if his body was over here where I drew this square and his foot was super wide. He'd have no explosion. He'd not, he would not be able to get out of this break. And this defender, even though it's a linebacker, would be able to recover on this thing. So guys, anytime that we're doing any type of crossover, the first step punches the grass. It's a hard step. We're on the ball of my foot, middle arch of my foot, but we are pushing to sell the outside fake to get that separation. Because the only way we get a DB to jump is if we step outside of his body frame. I think of it like you're driving, guys. We got a DB in the left lane. We're in the middle lane. We're trying to get him to jump to the right lane. I got to step all the way to the right lane and make that lane change to get him to jump to the outside. This is a perfect example. Open field crossover is a move that all wide receivers need to learn.